So hello everybody. I'm going to make. Uh, I made this quick video of my uh, second sub 31 second lap on the track Spaceport One of the game Millennium Racer. Uh, for you, uh, for those who don't know the game yet, uh, Millennium Racer is a, a racing platformer from uh, 1999, and it has some very uh, specific uh, rule, uh, a specific rule set for speed mechanics. So it's really difficult to uh, get a sub 31 second uh, lap on this track. Uh, this is only my, the second time I've done that, and this one is actually a quite a big improvement, and I could definitely see. Uh, some room for a bit more improvement but it is going to be very difficult as I've done this lap around I don't know maybe uh, 600-700 times probably more I mean if you look at my attempts for the uh, the amount of attempts for this specific uh, easy championship you can see I've done 115 attempts now most of those end up uh, failing in the first track, so but this is the first track, so even if I only did this track five times because easy championship you are required to do five laps, then I already have more than 500 laps, and I've done a lot that I did not uh, that were not part of the uh, full easy run, so I've just done in individual levels as well. So yeah, I think I might be even closer to a thousand than to five hundred. So a lot, and I've only had two sub thirty-one second uh, runs. I'm going to explain you why this is so difficult, and just a bit uh, general information about the game. So let's first talk about the speed mechanics in this game. I'm just going to uh, sh uh, show a short part of this track and you can see me going 940 miles per hour I hit the golden strips on the floor which are superconductors according to the game which uh, increase your speed by a lot but only if you are going uh, if you are going slower than 950 miles per hour when you hop onto them as you can see here we are going 972 so first we will decelerate, and then we will accelerate again. But if I was going uh, faster, it would uh, decelerate a lot more before I was able to accelerate again. So this was a really good speed. And now, uh, when you're not on a superconductor, so you're on this normal, uh, normal path of the track, this, uh, there's another limit that applies to the same rules, you can boost with the shift key, which will uh, de uh, which will increase your speed. But if you do it while well, you are going above 640 miles per hour, you will actually decelerate first to uh, 640 miles per hour, and then you will be able to accelerate again. But basically, you do not want to uh, sacrifice that amount of speed. Which is why you won't see me boosting here while I'm going uh, 1050 miles per hour. Because that would just uh, slow me down again. Uh, instead you will see me uh, tapping boost. Uh, as much as possible because each time you tap boost the uh, speed of deceleration which is normal. Uh, you will always go uh, slower the longer you uh, keep going until you hit like a bottom line. Where it will slowly increase again, but you will always slow down very quickly if you are going above like 900 miles per hour. Watch out, cat! <laughs> so you have to be, you have to keep that in mind. So when you start decelerating and you tap boost, you prevent uh, a rapid deceleration, which you will see here as well. I will tap boost, which you can tell by the fire coming out of the back of the bike. And that basically uh, allows me to 
decelerate a lot slower. There you, you can see me jumping right after it as well. That doesn't really do anything. Uh, those green wings you saw there. Well, that one green wing that you saw there is a uh, speed boost. It increases your speed by uh, around 200 miles per hour. Regardless of whether you are boosting or not or how fast you are going. So even if you are going uh, 2000 miles per hour for example it would still boost your speed to 2200 miles per hour. So you can see that here it will accelerate slightly more than 200 miles per hour. And I will continue boosting and this is where it starts to get uh, interesting in terms of the sub 31 second laps so normally I would jump out of bounds to the right of the track here I would jump uh, I would slow down first before I do that then jump on the on that uh, on the ring you see in the back there not the brown ring but basically the ring that surrounds the the actual track I would jump on the side of that and then I would jump up uh, to the other part of the track, if you can see the map at the bottom right of the corner, uh, bottom right corner, you will see that the uh, that the next part of the track goes back in around in a circle and goes over this part of the track. So I jump onto that, and then I have to wait five seconds. Oh, well, I'll get to that later. But basically, I do that, and then I get. Uh, oh, watch out, cat! And then I jump back onto the track there, up there, and I get much quicker time. Uh, let's just watch yeah. it first. Oh, no. So this is not what I would oh, normally my. do. Normally I would jump on, slow down and jump on directly. And then I'd have to wait here for around 5 seconds yeah. before being able to continue. And what I did instead, let's see if I can... Oh click the right part here. What oh I did instead no. yeah. was go at full speed yeah. without slowing down, uh, bumping myself into this, uh, bumping myself into this ring. But basically, uh, I should explain how out of bounds works here. Basically, a timer starts once you're out of bounds, which counts down. I think it's around 10 seconds. Once it uh, once you go over those 10 seconds, you get put back on the last known position on the track. And there is another timer, which I have no idea how it works. But once you go uh, out of bounds, it starts uh, counting. And here, at this part, you will have to wait a while before being able to jump back into the track. That's why you see me balancing on the edge of the track here, which basically still counts as out of bounds. So I have to wait there for a while before being able to jump back into the track, or the game will recognize that I am uh, quote unquote cheating, and it will give me a minus lap, which means you lose all the time uh, you spent on this specific lap. So what I did here, uh, compared to normal runs of this lap, is that I came in with full speed, I did not slow down, and yeah. I bumped, here I jumped off uh, out of bounds, which started the timer for out of bounds, oh. I bumped into this thing, now oh, I yeah. landed on the oh. edge again, without hovering above the track, as you can tell, which means the timer for out of bounds is still uh, going. Oh so I can just jump up here, jump back into the track here while still remaining out of bounds. But the timer has already been running since I made this jump here. This jump into the into the ring base. Yeah. This jump. This is where the out of bound timer started running and oh it no. kept running because I did not hit the track here. Oh my. So as I wait, make my way back up here, it basically allows me to wait, to not have to wait here for 5 seconds, 
but instead I have to wait only for three seconds because the other two seconds I've already been out of bounds because I jumped against the ring there here so then I can jump back into bounds a lot quicker well a lot uh, that's an exaggeration <laughs> a few uh, a few uh, uh, maybe half a second quicker so I can jump back in quicker and that's when and that's basically how you get a sub 31 second lap as you can see here now the fun thing about how uh, how quick this lap is that if you replay the profile you saved it uh, depending on how it feels it might just never uh, finish the run because it still counts it as a minus lap which does happen in replays for some reason but in other cases yeah. you will oh, see that no. you do make it but that's a good sign about how close you are to uh, to actually getting the maximum or the minimum time yeah. I could have saved I think maybe 10 milliseconds here yeah. Or I could have gone slightly faster at the beginning because this isn't really a super speed here. 1160 is a wide, but you could go faster. But yeah. the problem is oh that no. if you go too fast, you will bump into the ring here oh and go back onto the track, which would reset the out of bounds timer. So you would have to wait here for five seconds again instead of three seconds. And that's basically what makes it so difficult doing this uh, particular jump and bumping hard enough yeah. to land back oh onto no. the edge of the track but not harder but not oh. too hard that you land onto the track and it is very difficult and even if you make it you yeah. might have been too fast so you can't count so you shouldn't have counted to three but you should have counted yeah. to four because you weren't out of bounds long enough and that makes it a lot more difficult so hopefully uh, this explanation works somewhat. It's not really <laughs> extremely technical, but because I have no idea how to read code or anything like that. So, yeah. but this is basically oh, my no. explanation of how to do it. Oh my. But yeah, I've only done it twice, so <laughs> it's not like it's really easy, but. This sh you should be able to do it if you grind it enough, which I will do. Yeah. But yeah, a sub 31 second lap for this track is really difficult. But now you can try it as well with these tactics. It should work if you manage to count well enough and if you manage to make the bump uh, work properly. So there you go, I'm going to just play it one more time so you can take everything I said and look at what I do. And that will be it. There you have it, sub 31 seconds, spaceport one lap. And that's all for me for now. If you have any questions about this lap or how the speed mechanics work, feel free to ask them. And if not, feel free to try the game. It's an abandonware game, so you can just download it and play it for free. So that shouldn't be stopping you from playing this game. And I could really use some competition or someone who's able to find uh, other skips because I think I've found everything I could find, but you never know. So thanks for tuning in and uh, see you next time.